this car from a friend. It, it was just a chassis. The car was completely taken apart. The interior was out of it. It didn't even roll at the time. And uh, so we, we made it roll to start working on it. And um, I started with a lot of the suspension stuff. That is on the floor here, mounted loosely. Oh, okay. Recently, we convinced our buddy to take it out of storage to go to the track. It is down into the low 11s right now. In this track day, we were hoping to get it down into the 10s. Yeah, it's This is an in-car of the last pass. I realize that the camera angle isn't the greatest. Next time we will have a mount on the side of the helmet or in the car. the in car of the last pass. The changes he made uh, to this pass bumped the two-step RPM up to see if he could launch the car a little harder and inch it closer to that 10 second pass. The left lane was a slick only night and was prepped decently well. On this pass, he bumped the two-step up a little more. Unfortunately, it pushed through the front tires. He went to turn it back down and get in line again. In the meantime, a nostalgia fuel car ended up going down the left lane and blew up. It all down the entire prep side of the track. After a short delay, the track decided just to just open up the right lane for the rest of the night. The, on that car. It wants to go swinging out sideways. the track had sat for a little too long, wow. no cars going down it. The right lane had blew up pretty heavily, and that pretty much ended our night. You got it roadworthy and then uh, you got it to the track. How do you remember that first experience taking it and being disappointed? Yes, <laughs> I I think I was running high mid to high thirteens if my memory serves me right, but I had uh, some street uh, radios on it and it just did not hook up well at all. Um, the car would mile an hour pretty well, but it uh, would be all over the place in the first thousand feet and um, and, you, and you had some stock shocks on it or some blown out uh, lake woods yeah, or something yeah, like that I had uh, non adjustable lake woods that um, after I removed them later they were extremely bad they uh, wouldn't rebound at all they would there's no damping going on they were just just basically bolted in there and they were filling the space. They weren't actively doing anything. And then you made some upgrades for the next time you went to the track and you progressively started making it better. Yes, yeah, I upgraded the slicks, uh, 26 inch slicks. Um, and I had to do a dry shaft loop at that time. I got uh, drag shocks for the back uh, that were adjustable and then I got uh, trick springs all the way around. 
Do you remember the one thing that actually helped this car the most? There's a lot of small improvements. <laughs> um, the air cleaner lid filter was worth about a tenth of a second. Mm -hmm. that was I remember big, that. That was mm -hmm. a big improvement. Um, I remember when we dumped a bunch of ignition timing yeah, into it. Yeah, getting a good tune-up in it was a big improvement and a lot of driver uh, practice also. Anti-roll <laughs> anti bar mm -hmm. and uh, adjustable control arm and control arm mounting points uh, made a big difference with this 60 foot on mm -hmm. this car. And you're doing it all with a small black Chevy, which is a Ford Sin. Yes. But this motor wasn't initially intended to be in this car. We had a different car. He had a different car at the time, and yeah, that didn't work out. 79 Monza, it was, it was pretty rusty, and I was over my head with that project. And this this was a little more cookie cutter. There's a lot more information online. Uh, you buy mm -hmm. a lot more aftermarket support. So 3 to 5 stroker, mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, 40 thousandths over standard board. It's, it's about 10 3 to 1 compressions, so not anything crazy. On a... On a entry level low cost uh, pro max head right so i remember one of the first times both of us had uh our cars at the track um we didn't really understand how fast your car was because you could never get it off the you know get a 60 it, foot with right. the hard tires that were on it right. but there's a video of um me letting you uh take the tree and me trying to chase you down and that's pretty much what we realized that basically run it's going to run a similar time like right? And you did a really good job with the subframe connectors. I mean, you can see that you graft them into the um, original frame rail. So. Uh, yeah, original frame rail and it actually goes through the floor and is welded on the top side as well, connecting to the rear um, unibody. I am just running a cheap summit fuel pump, carbureted fuel pump on this and uh, three ace line and I, I actually braced a, a straw into the factory hat uh, I didn't end up going with the sump on this but this setup's been working uh, just fine hard line three ace line mm -hmm. uh, it was cheap and simple back when I was in college I bet that all up these are the you can see the bolt-in uh, boxes in the back the control arm reinforcement brackets or sometimes people call them battle boxes Got some floor holes that I have to patch. Duct tape's covering up, and there's a big one over there. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment if you have any questions or want me to do any more in-depth details on anything that I've shown. I plan to post more content in the future. Some of the videos might be short, some might be long. But if any of this so far has piqued your interest, please feel free to come back and watch again.